Hello everybody, and welcome back to King's Quest 3. And before we move on, there's something I want to show you. I just discovered there's an alternate way to defeat Medusa, one that's not quite as honorable. So, you still use the hand mirror on her, but use it on her while she's... oh. You feel a strange sensation overcoming your body. You feel a sharp pain as your limb... So apparently if you wait too long, she comes hey, out of the shadows already. Everything. I didn't realize you had to hurry with that part. Let me try that again. Okay, so let's hurry this time and use the mirror on her before she comes out of the shadows. <laughs> but yeah, that's not the best way to do it, of course. We had to Anything save her. Anything you wanted to say should have been said. Yeah, that's kind of the narrator saying, yeah, not the best thing to do. Anyway, yeah, there's another way to do it. Either, either way, it gets rid of your hand mirror. So yeah, let's, uh, go back to where I was before. And uh, there's one thing, more thing I want to do. I reloaded and just went to sleep without making the cookie porridge. So, because uh, I want to see if uh, Manana has another conversation for us if we just feed him regular food. Now, something I read, I, I, I guess I overemphasized the need for the porridge because we do need it but if you give it to Mananan to eat you can get another from the bear's house in fact you can get an infinite number so don't worry about it like I made you worry about it before but he actually uh, oh I need to sleep I forgot that saved right before the sleep so sleepy sleepy yeah he does actually say something very interesting and if possible in the next episode I may even uh, show a uh, Another conversation. We'll see if there's more. I am hungry. What he has to say at once. is actually really, really um, relevant to the series as a whole. So let me see. Yep, I have the porridge and nothing else. Mananan is in peace. Yes, yes, I know. So give him the porridge. And he uh, chows down up really, really fast. And we talk to him. Uh, Master? What is it? Have you any family? What do you care of that subject? You've been the closest thing that I have to a father. As close as the heavens are to your grasp. And I was pondering on the members of my extended family. If there are any. Mm, not that it is of any concern to you, but I have a sister and a brother. Neither would be remotely interested in knowing a common servant. Of course, it was foolish of me. Why would they wish to know a lowly urchin? Exactly, though you flatter yourself. My sister would find you too ugly, and my brother would find you too... male. You begin to think that Mananan isn't the social type. Personally, I think you'd make a better scullery maid than what you pass yourself off as now. So, we already knew about his sister, Hagatha, who took care of her as King Graham. But what about this brother he mentions? I'm talking about that he prefers female slaves. Well, that's something for another time. Anyway, let's get back to where we really were before. So, last time, we made the last of our spells. And made something a little special for Mananan. You were careful when you crumbled the cat cookie into the porridge. It looked just like a plain bowl of porridge. <laughs> I've been working on my evil laugh. <laughs> Mananan is in peace. Okay, that's enough. Let's do this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that cat hair will do that to you. You watch, barely able to control a smile from spreading over your face. The wizard chokes on his little snack and clutches his throat. He seems to be turning a somewhat bluish color. Oh, I think he might be choking rather than uh, turning into a cat. As the wizard manages to swallow the tainted, once-hidden cookie, he greedily gulps the remainder of the porridge. Oh. You watch, oh. hoping for a sign that the spell will begin its work. But it seems the wizard is unaffected. Oh, shoot. Um, that didn't work out too well. Something is wrong. 
I feel strange. Oh. Really? Maybe you should curl up. Have a cat nap. <laughs> what was in that porridge? A cookie? Yes, sir. Ah, the cookie. You know, that reminds me of a poem. Root of mandrake and fish oil. With cat hair over which I toil. I love My it. Spell! <laughs> oh, you know that one. You! 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 Yes? You won't get away with this! You'll be sorry, Gwydion! Oh, you just tried it! <laughs> My name is Alexander. <laughs> oh, man. Now that is awesome. Keeping your change me back immediately. Sorry. Don't know how. Liar. Besides, the spell set is permanent. Keeping your voice down inside the wizard's house was something you learned well from an early age. Oh. Keeping your You won't look so clever once you've been shrunk down to size. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I love that. That I, ne I never knew he said that because that alludes to something. Change me back. Sorry. You don't say you anything else. Okay. I wonder if the other cat has anything to say about this. Oh, do we need that bowl? Oh, it's gone. Never mind. I guess we didn't need it. <laughs> so, guess what? No more wizard to worry about. No more clock to worry about. It's still gonna be there, but we just don't have to worry about it. So. Oh, I need to get my stuff, because we can leave here for good. What the? Strange. There's nothing in the painting now. That is odd. Not much behind, above, or below the painting. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you right now, that painting was not of Mananin, even though it kind of said it was before. At least I don't think it was a picture of Mananin. Well, I think I know who it was. Anyway. Let's say goodbye to this room. We never have to hide anything again. We can take it all. Uh, feels good. Freedom! <laughs> Where is that other cat anyway? I think he just ran away. Ah. Say goodbye to the house, because we're never coming back. So, we got a lot of points for that last thing. Look at that. You pull out your magic map. I think we only had like 90 before, and now we went to 150. Anyway, remember that Mananin was the one that was kind of watching the ships that came in and out of Ludor. And if we had tried to take one before, well, he would have stopped us. But now he cannot. You feel a strange... So, uh, let's see if we can't catch a ship. First, we want to go into the tavern. Or do we? Beat it. Wench! Right. Come on. Hurry up, hurry up. I can't move until you're done. supposed to be like a ship here and sailors and there's a fishy there we haven't been here before hmm maybe we have to just kind of go back and forth let me let me keep going back and forth until we find the sailors Okay, I seriously spent the last 10 minutes trying to figure out why I couldn't progress with the story. Turns out, there's one spell I forgot. Yeah, I checked my inventory. I still had acorns. I was like, why do I still have those? There's one spell I forgot to do. Now I'm thinking I'll let you leave until you have all the spells, because otherwise, the game would be unwinnable. So, let's see. Oh, I forgot causing a deep sleep. I did not do that one. So, uh, let us recite. Oh, whoops. He just collapsed.
collapsed, you shouldn't try making up your own spells. Look at that leg. Is that like broken? It's like pointing that way. Uh, I don't know. Just looks awkward, pixelated like that. Anyway, let's do the spell for reals. All right, time to uh, do this one last spell. Jeez, I thought I was done with this place for good. I even told you guys we're done with this place, but no. You place the acorns in the mortar. You grind the acorns into a fine powder. Nice. Next, pour acorn powder in a bowl. And we actually did get our bowl back from the kitchen. Okay. You carefully scoop the acorn powder out of the mortar. You put the acorn powder into the bowl. All right, we now have acorn powder. Yay! Nightshade juice. Stir it with a spoon. The nightshade. You pour one cup of nightshade juice into the bowl. And use a trusty spoon. You carefully stir the contents of the bowl. All right. Light charcoal brazier, boil a mixture. All right. You light the. You place the bowl on the charcoal brazier. You wait until the nightshade juice is almost gone. A damp, powdery substance remains behind in the bowl. Nice. Alright. The mixture from heat, spread mixture on table, and wait until it's dry. You remove the bowl from the charcoal brazier. Okay. You pour the contents of the bowl onto the table. Well, we just poured over there. You know, I did click over here, but whatever. Whatever, Alexander. And let's see. Is it dry yet? The sleeping powder dries on the wizard's table. You remind yourself not to breathe too heavily. All right, so I believe we can say the spell now. With trepidation, you prepare to recite the causing a deep sleep incantation. Echor and nightshade together mixed. Concoction of a deep sleep fixed. From places of much lesser light, you bring to them a long good night. And we wave our magic wand. Well, it's ours now. You wave the magic wand over the powder. And we put it into a pouch. You carefully scoop up the powder from the table. With steady hands, you put the sleeping powder into the empty pouch. You now have a magical powder that will put anyone in the vicinity to sleep when poured on the ground in a place where there's both darkness and moisture. That's the charcoal brazier burns out. Those are really specific conditions. Surely we will never find ourselves in those conditions where we will need to use the sleep powder. Never. Oh, I'm not... No, I, I, I think I can go up with surviving the catch, but uh, I don't want to try it. Kill me, kitty. Okay. Yeah, going up, the kitty won't kill you. And we could just leave this open. <laughs> or we should have shut the kitty in there. I could probably find its way out. Cats are like that. So now we should be able to progress. You pull. So let's go to town. Yeah, this sleep powder is really, really necessary for what's coming up. And. There we go. There they are. Oh great, we're gonna have to pass three trials, aren't we? Which get out of here with more rum! <laughs> Don't you be grog? A loud bunch of seafarers swap yarns between swills of rum. It would seem they're getting ready to set sail. Ooh, I wanna come back. The sailors peer at you through bleary eyes and continue swilling their rum. One who looks like the captain pauses and drunkenly speaks to you. I may back out, be ye wanting passage on me ship. What yes, you running from? <laughs> oh, it's no matter, as long as you got gold. Let's me see how much you got. The drunken sea captain looks angry as he speaks again. Don't ignore me, laddie. I asked you how much gold you got for passage on me ship. 
Too late, Bocco. I ain't interested you no more. Go pester someone else. The sailors just ignore you. Well, luckily we do have gold, and hopefully he's still interested. We only have, like... You eagerly... The purse contains... Eight gold coins. Hopefully that's enough. As you bring out the purse, the captain snatches it from your hand. Aye, lad. I sees you do have a wee bit of gold. It's less of me regular fare, but I'll give you passage anyways. We'll be waiting for you at the wharf, but not for long. The captain and his men down their rum in one long draft, then leave the tavern. All right. So, guess what? We're leaving Ludor, finally. At this point, you should have 160 points if you've been following along in my haphazard uh, walkthrough. But if you do not, then there's something you missed. But I do have 160, so let's just get on with it. Ah, uh, there's their ship. Finally, off to, uh, well, I hope they'll go to Daventry. The seaman guarding the ship eyes you shiftily. You're no match for him. Well, anyway. Hi, the captain said you'd be coming along. Get on board. How can you see? Oh, well. Yeah. Nothing like a little bit of salt air to perk up a boy's spirits. You feel excited about the upcoming journey. Look at us go. Oi there, me lad. Allow me to introduce myself. My name's Captain Bloodlet. I'll be your host for this year voyage. Well, hello, or what Captain. you'll be remembering of it. Huh? <laughs> Pretty flag, ain't it? You're pirates? Afraid so. We'll be showing you teak waters now. Well, shit. Set course for the island. Aye, Captain. Well, we should have seen this one coming. Cautiously, you look around the dank cargo hold. Among stacks of wooden crates, a rope ladder dangles partway through an opening above. You're not interested in what's inside those crates, and they're too heavy to move. It's just out of reach. And it looks like they've taken all of our inventory. Yep. We still have the dough in our ears, though, so we've got that going for us. You can tell because those rats... Do you know where we're going? We'll be passing a beach near a big mountain range soon. Hmm. Ah, yes. I've heard the pirates say that nobody ever crossed those mountains alive. Interesting. A few, a few weeks in isolation, and you'll have good cause to matter like a nitwit. <laughs> Remember the emergency plan. In case of fire, storm, or plague, find a money pouch and hide. Those things are always the first to be saved. <laughs> ever try plugging a leak with your tail? I would do traveled on one of those royal vessels once. They're like a maze below decks. A few weeks in... Did you know that Pirate Chef has at least 20 recipes on how to cook us? <laughs> well, we seem to be stuck in a pirate ship. Whatever shall we do? Well, you're just going to have to find out next time on Let's Play King's Quest 3. Thank you for watching and have a good day.